Hi, and on today's video, I'm going to do a community request one. And this comes from a particular subscriber. Well, I'm hoping they're a subscriber. If they aren't, they best get hit in that like and subscribe button, hey. But they've asked me to do a video on how to build a PC, what they've classed as a, a good PC that's capable of gaming on a budget. Now, when people ask me to do stuff on a budget, I'm usually thinking this in my mind. In this case though, it's probably a little more like this. But that being said, at the end of the day, we've all got budgets to get to. I've certainly had to try to build PCs like this before for around those kind of marks. The challenge for me is obviously their request is in dollars and how that translates into UK pounds is around £224 at current market exchange rates, if Google is to be believed which presents a particular challenge, particularly since they want to game on that. Now, never fear, there are ways of doing this. There's a couple of options we're going to look at. One is building a brand new PC. Obviously, there I'll have to utilise an APU rather than a standard you know, breakdown of a CPU and graphics card because we certainly won't be able to hit that price point. The other way to do that is to look at the used market and we could be brave and just buy something completely off the used market whether it be eBay etc or if you're in America maybe Craigslist or we could look at building one based off eBay prices. So I'm going to look at a couple of options and we'll first start off with the used market because that's a little bit easier and what I'm going to do is kind of go through this from a UK perspective and a US perspective because you know, they are my main demographic. I know there's other people watching this. I do apologise. I'd love to do this in every single possible demographic area. But realistically, you're just going to be looking at the hardware specs. Now, the problem occurs where certain graphics cards or certain devices seem to have very fluctuating price points between countries. I've certainly found that when I looked to buy the Tesla P4. In America, you could pick it up for dirt cheap, or even from China, you could pick it up for dirt cheap. But yet, in the UK, it had a pretty much markup of around about 100% if you wanted to buy it directly in the UK. Which, if you're into drop shipping, is amazing because you can make a lot of money. That being said, what we're going to do is start to look at today how to build a PC for around the $300 mark. And I will apologise if we go slightly over. I can only go on current pricing, potential fluctuations in the market, and also other variables. Obviously, delivery, I'm not necessarily going to take into account. But also, I've got to be a bit realistic. That budget is quite tight. I think years ago, pre-pandemic, we probably could have achieved this a lot better. Certainly, markups on particular bits of kit have gone through the roof particularly with the demand now that more people are doing home labbing. Therefore, the used market is a lot more saturated with people marking up prices to maximise profit. I might do that as well, so I can't really grumble. But yeah, stay tuned and we'll see what we can do. We'll start off with the used market. So, let's get into this. Now, what I've done is I've opened up four tabs just so you're aware, hopefully you follow my mouse. I've got ebay.com, ebay.co.uk, uh, using Micro Center for the US and Overclockers for the UK. I'll just get that started because that does usually check your browser, although it's not going to today. So let's start with let's, let's start with going down this route. So buying something directly from Micro Center. Is it possible for three hundred dollars? Well, let's have a look. So if we typed in gaming PCs and <laughs> yeah, and went for the, say the lowest price, if we've got that option, uh, I can't see it easily. And maybe we just click shop all, yeah, and then do price lowest price. So the lowest price, bear in mind, if you've got that a little bit more budget, that's actually not that bad. That's, that's you know, it's it's a couple. 
of hundred dollars over, but realistically, that's not bad, you know, considering you're going to get a you know eleventh gen uh, Intel. Now, one thing I will say is Intel CPUs tend to be dearer for some reason than AMDs. I think it's just the pricing. I think they've tried to make it a little bit closer over the last few years, but particularly that's difficult. So. Yeah, that's quite a challenge. Now, okay, so if we can't do it that way, is there another way we can do this? And this is kind of where I get onto the used market side. So if I just go all desktops and then look at lowest price, now you start to see other devices come up, and this is kind of where I'm getting at. So when you see a lot of other YouTubers do uh, build a gaming PC on a budget, they will use something like the Dell Optibrix, mainly this one. There are reasons, so I've got some old uh, small form factor desktops kicking around. The challenge with them is most of them only come with a 180 watt power supply, which causes a few challenges, particularly if you're going to then put in multiple hard drives, you know, more memory, uh, you know, a CPU with higher TDP than you know potentially you you would use normally because you're gaming, so you want the highest single core count. They usually then start to struggle because you've only got 180 watts to play with. Now, ones that you can get with 300 watt power supplies tend to be really well sought after, particularly if you can get an i7 variant. So what we'll do is we'll kind of look at that and then what we can do with it. So if we looked at this one, for example, what's this currently got in it? Now, I do believe this does come with a 300 watt power supply. I've definitely had one of these before. If not, it's at least 200 and something. So it's normally a little bit higher. Let's just double check that because I don't want to uh, start going down this route. Yeah, so 255, which will do. That will certainly meet that need. It's the challenge is more around the 180 watts. So this is what I would potentially recommend. If you're going to try and do something like this on this kind of budget, bearing in mind this is coming with a you know 256 gig SSD. This is an i5. Could we get a better value somewhere else? Well, let's have a look. Most likely on eBay. Now, the problem I think we will find, that's on the graphics card, but one of the problems I think we'll find is that this may not translate perfectly. All that being said, we can start to see some of these prices for these PCs. So you've kind of got a reasonable price mark here. Ignore the shipping, because that's potentially shipping to me. So that's quite expensive, or from UK. So some of these are in the United Kingdom, so I could go and buy one of these myself for you know reasonable price. I might go and have a look and, and maybe do this, maybe physically go out and build one of these. Certainly Keltel I know are in the UK because I've used them. Uh, what I want really though is some that are actually in the US. Now I think the problem will be is eBay will know my location, so it's always going to come up with those bits. So let's just go with the price points that we can kind of look at it from that point. So we really want to find an i7 version if we can. So let's see what we can get with an i7. And they start to go up. Now this is just because people are profiteering. That doesn't mean this is the full price. But let's say, okay, this one here, for example... This would probably meet our needs. So don't get me wrong, you can certainly get this cheaper. So don't go off this price. I would imagine you can get this for around half this current price if you looked around. But this one would certainly fulfill the need that we're looking for. So what we're getting for this price is kind of not far off what we were looking at here. And this is why I said you can probably barter a little bit. However, this one has obviously got the i7, which the reason for that is we want that higher single core count. But what we will also get for this is probably, you know, either something if you shop around you might get a better deal. Or you can see that they've also included something in there that we could potentially get rid of. You know, we could sell that on. We don't necessarily need that graphics card because we're going to look at something else. So what I would suggest is if you're trying to do this on that kind of $300 budget maybe go for something like this so a Dell Optiplex 3020 and then go for a Radeon RX 6400 now again you're going to want the single bay one not the dual bay because of the way these 
components work because they tend to face the power supply. So I would certainly look at one of these type. So the speeds to Swift will probably most likely fit. And if you kind of look between the budgets now, excluding the shipping, because like I said, that's going to be a little bit outweighed because of the challenge. Again, I think if you shop around, you could probably find this for a lot better value. Um, and that will certainly manage reasonable games. You know, 1080p gaming will certainly do a lot of stuff on there. Your kind of bottleneck will be your four gigabytes long term. But for value wise, I'm told this is for just driving off the PCI bus lane. This is probably the best bang for your buck graphics card to use. You will hear people tell you about the you know the the Nvidia 1660 series or 1660 series. Very difficult to get hold of and very very out of price most of the time. So this is where I would go. Could you build one this way? Yes, most likely. However. You know, if you wanted to buy from a more reputable seller, you could certainly go and buy the i5 and then maybe upgrade it at a later date. There's not going to be a huge difference early on, depending on whether the game is CPU bound or GPU bound. So you've got a couple of options there. But that's how we do it used used market in the US. Now, if we're going to do that in the UK, let's go and look at this the other way around now. So I'm now in the UK and or well, the UK version. I now go and look at that same requirement. I'm not sure why I'm getting fashion stuff. I7, and let's see what we can get in the UK. And you will find, like I said, people deliberately do markups here. I mean, wow, look at this. That's a 710, not a 720, but, you know, they're kind of, you know, offering a decent thing there. One terabyte SSD. You know, so depends how much you want to spend. You could almost buy something prefabricated. Let's uh, get rid of that. We don't want that. Uh, we could go i7 third gen. That's the problem. It's a third gen RAM capacity. We only want 8 gig. We get it for about 240. Not really what I'm looking for. I'm not really looking for business sellers because, you know, being a business seller myself, we're looking to maximise profits. So that's not what I want. What I would be doing is looking at these. Now the problem is there, that was a 2600, not what I want. But this one, that would certainly do the job. And that's a really good price actually. So I'd probably need to look at what the power supply is in one of these. But that's, you know, like I said, you, you gotta be happy with the fact that there's, there's a few marks on it. Is a 920 big enough to have yeah, it's got a 16 slot. Doesn't tell me what the power supply is anywhere. So we probably need to look at that. But they certainly have got... That's a, that's a really good deal, actually, for that kind of price. Again, shop around, because you're likely to find something a little bit better. Now, the problem comes when I start to look here for the 6400 in the UK. And you'll see my challenge... Apart from that one, which I don't think is a single slot, and I'd have to double check, and it's probably not low profile. That's the that's the key part here. Then the marks seem to go up, or you can't even get it. Or when you can, people are really cashing in. So there's a few little things there. Now you can, instead of going for the small form factor market, you can go for the full towers. That's another option. Now if you went for a full tower you probably would get a better deal, but bear in mind you're going to have a larger case, so it's not going to look as pretty. So you've got a few of those challenges there to kind of keep in tech. So that's the use side. What about if we were to look at this from a potential of doing it brand new? Let's just shut some of these down. So we'll just leave ourselves with micro center and overclockers. Now we're just going to pull in a spreadsheet I started which I kind of set out an aim to achieve this and this was my kind of aim to do away with that kind of price mark I could get it for around 300 pounds 
And this is where the markets massively vary. So for me, I could pick up an AMD Ryzen 5 3400G for £99. Yet in America, it was $143. That might translate. I need to double check. But obviously, that's taking a considerable amount of my budget. Now, obviously, this doesn't use a graphics card because it's using APU so the Ryzen 5 is basically my GPU as well. Now performance wise would this stand up to the cheaper model? Probably not so if we went for the used model we'd probably get better performance graphically potentially out of that because it's got its own dedicated GPU. That being said obviously this processor is going to massively outperform the other one. So the only way I'm ever going to prove one way or the other is to probably build these. So I will, in the near future, all being well, go out and build these exact two models. So buy uh, a Dell and buy one of these, build one of these, and do a test. We'll do some gaming benchmarks to find out which one comes out on top. Now, what I'll probably do is we'll see if we can find any benchmarks in a moment to see if we can find a way to do this. Now, if I was going to try and look at this from a micro center point let's see how much we can get a Ryzen 5 3400G now I went for the 3400 you can go lower and still get a G um, I think the reason I've done that is because it kind of still fitted in the price point so we're certainly going to want to go for a Ryzen 5 at the very least ideally why won't it let me select anything Oh wow, have they just only got, have they got shortage? No, I can now select. So let's see what we've got, Ryzen 5. So a Ryzen 5, and remember we need the G. So that one's no good. But we need to find a G model. It's the best, oh there you go, so that's actually not a bad one. There's an upgrade, so you can get a 4600G for that price so that's actually good so again this is why it's worth shopping around and like I said prices fluctuate quite a lot so so as long as the system board supports that series I'm pretty sure it will but it does say here save £20 or so $20 when bundled with a compat uh, compatible eligible motherboard so what we could do is go in here add that to my list and then hopefully we could find a system board as well that would suit that it doesn't really come in straight away to make it obvious so either way let's add it to the list just so that we know uh, continue shopping and then we'll go motherboards and see if we can find a motherboard that is capable it will be an AM4 and we'll go lowest to lowest price to highest and this is probably where we are, and I think actually that's probably not far off what I said, an A520, obviously this is an ASRock, so in theory that one should do. So we could use that absolutely, so there's an option straight away that you can use. And then obviously just go and find the bundled memory, CPU cooler, again, kind of depending on your budget, you can go out and buy a cheap one for now, but I would recommend something like a Noctua or a Be, a Be Quiet long term. But certainly, that's kind of within the budget. So, you know, it actually might seem more competitive to go to the likes of Micro Center. I was basing my original pricing off Amazon. So, yeah, there's a kind of challenge. Now, if we was going to flip back and do this in the UK, let's see what we could actually find this time around. So, I like overclockers because overclockers used to send you Haribo free. I'm not sure they still do that, but um, I'm not ordered from them. In a, in, a, in a little while so so I can't get a 4500 with the G annoyingly they've got a shortage of them wow okay can I get a so I can get a G here but you know that's kind of the lowest price like I said components are a little bit harder to come by in the UK we do struggle for some reason I'll, I'll look at another place in a moment see what we can find but let's go and look for the system board at least while we're waiting. So let's go AMD motherboards. And we just want an AM4. Again, we'll look for that 520 just because. 
that should do. I mean, what we've got to bear in mind is if we were going to use the next generation up, is it capable with a flash of coming to that kind of criteria? So let's go price ascending. So as you can see, the ones that are a reasonable price are completely out of stock. And this is what I say is some of the challenge. Now, I could obviously go and find eBay, Amazon, that kind of thing, and probably get them. Or I could look at another retailer's site. So CCL is another company that I use a fair bit. Again, these two reasonably good deals. Uh, they do do a lot of bundle deals as well. So we could probably find something quite useful. So if we just go AM5, um, sometimes they bundle stuff in. Like you can get free games, etc. So you might be able to get a, a better deal. So if we just go low to high, we can kind of find... There we go. So we can find a 4600G here with six cores, 12 threads for £99. So again, I, I might at some point when I've got a bit more money available go and spend and, and maybe build both of these kind of solutions and we'll do some benchmarking. Yeah, that's not bad. What about the system board, though? Could we go and get the system board? I mean, everything else apart from that, memory, um, you know, etc., all the other bits are reasonably easy to get hold of, so I'm not too worried. And again, if you buy them as a bundle, you might get a better deal. So let's just look at motherboards, and we'll do AMD socket, and we'll go for socket AM4, and we'll go low to high, and yeah, they've got that 520 ASRock 4, better than I found earlier, so £57, which would absolutely do the job. So there's a couple of options there. Now, if we're going to look at the graphics cards here, for example, and this is, again, where I kind of bring it back to some of those challenges we have. Yeah, I mean, that's that's good, is it? Not low profile, though, is it? That's really annoying, actually, um, because if that was, I'd rather buy it off these. I don't think any of them are low profile. Ah, uh, frustrating. But you can see the kind of price that you get now. Yeah, I don't know if that is no, and it's two bay that one as well. So yeah, not not what we do. What not we be looking for? We'd be looking for the single, single slot ones. But yeah, you can kind of see the the, the supply challenges we have here in the UK are very different to what you probably get in the US. Obviously, a bigger country, a lot more demand for this kind of kit. Um, so yeah, a, a lot simpler for you. But there we go. That's that's ways you can build a PC for you know around the three hundred pound mark or three hundred dollar mark. And I'll just reshare that, and that gives you an idea. I will stick a link to these pieces in the description. I probably will update the Ryzen to a four thousand series if I can get that same price on Amazon. But at least it gives you an idea um, of what is potentially capable. How these will run, I'd be keen in the future to actually go and buy these and then do a benchmark test on them. I think we'll probably be surprised. I think obviously the you know you'd expect CPUs to be massively outperforming the older generation. However, it'd be interesting to see the you know the APU against the graphics card to see what kind of works there. So let's see if we can find a bit of benchmarking on that while we're while we're looking. So what are we looking at? A versus Somebody's done something similar, but albeit with a RX 570. So yeah, actually, that's quite surprising. So that's obviously the thread performance, which you'd expect. So maybe it would give it a run for its money. So we need to, you know, I, I think it'd be worth the test. So I might, in the near future, when I've got £600 spare, just go and, uh, you know, go and do this. So there we are. 
I think we've kind of concluded it is possible. Um, yeah, the sort of three hundred dollar mark was was a bit of a challenge, but there's ways to do it, and you know it's about shopping around. I'd love to say and write an article to say this is exactly what machine you build, but obviously the fluctuation, the pricing, um, you know, in the UK and US makes that very difficult to do but i've kind of hopefully given you some suggestions on where you can potentially go with this now the art of pc building is is a good one um, i've done it many many times over the years it's something i'm very passionate about normally when i'm kind of looking at budgets i would always set myself a very minimum target of around 600 uk pound which i suppose translates to maybe 700 dollars i guess that would normally buy you a very, very decent rig indeed. Now, the challenge obviously always comes when it comes to graphics cards. Now, graphics cards can be the price of a small kidney, depending on what you're looking at. Most likely, the NVIDIA series are usually the most ridiculous when it comes to MSRP numbers. But if you now start to look at the older generation cards, particularly the 10 or 20,000 series now or the 2,000 series you can pick them up a reasonable price even the 3,000 series now because there's a massive massive um, stock of those they are selling pretty well when you obviously start to look at the 4,000 series then you are really really increasing your costs processor wise again I'm I have been a massive convert recently back to AMD I went for a stage of working with AMD for a long while uh, kind of lost faith with them, moved into the i7 market around the 8th generation, stuck with them for some time, actually it might have been 7th generation, but stuck with them for some time, and then moved back around the time the 9th generation CPUs come out for Intel. So it's probably around the time the Ryzen 3rd generation started to come out, I moved over then. Now, the last ones I had previous to the one I've got now was a you know fifth generation. I do again have a fifth generation, but I've dropped down the spec of that. Which way would I go now? It's difficult. Am I team red or team blue? I couldn't really answer that because some of the information I've seen for the latest Intel kind of really shows that they've up their game as well. So there's there's things to be said both ways. It depends whether you're looking for more cores and more threads or whether you're looking for a higher single core performance. Also, you need to take into account thermals, where I believe you need a small refrigerator to actually cool some of the latest Intel chips. But that can also be said for certain AMDs if you went through a Fred Ripper, for example. So you've got plenty of options there. Now, when it comes to storage, I would always recommend looking at SSDs, potentially NVMe drives, if your motherboard supports it, because the read and write speeds are phenomenal when it compares to the old spinny disks. Problem is, when you're buying used, you're most likely to get spinny disk. Therefore, your best bet in the very first instance is to replace that. You will potentially have limited options, but you should potentially be able to replace it with a standard SSD. Now, there may be scenarios where if you've got a PCI bus lane that you can use, you can get an NVMe or SD converter, depending again on your power and utilisation levels, and also if it enables you to boot off that device. Now, if it doesn't allow you to boot, you can still use that as a storage drive. So if you're going to put games or something else on there, you can certainly utilise those higher speeds. Now, you're certainly not going to get um, PCIe 4 or 5 in this kind of budget range, that would be you know, going upwards of that 600, 700 pound mark to really start to see the benefits there. But hopefully I've kind of shown you that you can buy or build machines on a budget. It is possible, it is feasible. However, like I said, I would always recommend trying to look at what your particular use case is. If it's just going to be a desktop workstation for work, you're probably realistically looking at power. You know, you're looking at optimising that power, so you wouldn't want something that draws particularly a lot. Now, for example, for work, I've got a laptop I can use, but I generally use my home machine, which can draw anywhere from 150 to 300 watts, depending on what it's doing. However, if I run a laptop, obviously, I'd potentially only ever be drawing 75. So, those are the kind of considerations you'd like to make. Now, obviously, when it comes to gaming, that laptop would never, ever suffice. So... 
you know, there's plenty of use cases and, and understanding descriptions of what you're looking for. So I think always, like you do with any project, it's kind of define your scope. So what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to deliver? And therefore then build out. Now, the great thing is about obviously building PCs is there's always the opportunity to upgrade, particularly if you built it yourself, you then kind of know your upgrade path. Now, the problem is, is obviously technology always moves forward. So you're going to get occasions where you're jumping up a generation, therefore you're going to need different memory. So you're going from DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, that kind of thing. And also with the sockets as well, you know, they have a limited lifespan. You know, unfortunately, I think AM4 is now being classed for decommissioned at some point in time. I think the, the latest Ryzen, which is the one I'm using, was the very last AM4 CPU made, for example. So yeah, hopefully you've found that useful. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe. And as I promised, I delivered this video this month. Just.